how did you guys uh how did you guys reignite the fuel so to speak nice oh boy here we go ready right. who goes i'll i'll start Guys, we got a really cool one for you guys tonight. We are with Carl and Kevin from the band Fuel. We'll bring them in right now. Kevin, welcome. Hey, what's happening, man? Carl, welcome to the show, man. Hey, what's happening, man? How are you? I'm fuzzing. I'm fuzzing. I, I, I like that. That's good. See, um, dude, I, I really, guys, I really appreciate your time. Um, thanks for coming on and talking to us. Um, thanks, Bob. Got a couple of questions about the tour. A couple of questions about the new album, which is. Uh, it's called Anomaly. Um, I put it on and and listened to the whole thing. You guys got a hell of a record on your hands right now. You guys are going to be appearing locally at Empire Live, January 29th. Doors are open at 7 o'clock. Boys, welcome to the show. Thanks for having and, us. Um, Thanks. This is your first album as Fuel, I believe, in 18 years. Is that correct? As this first version of Album, Kevin and I, maybe, I guess, right? Okay, all right. And others uh, done one without Miller there, but then Miller and I, you know. And there's one without Carl. And there's one without Carl. So. <laughs> we'll mix and match, right? So this is, I mean, this is really the first. We apologize, uh, it's just the way things work, right? Right. This, so this is really the first heavy hitter you guys got back together. How did you guys, uh, how did you guys reignite the fuel, so to speak? Nice. Oh, boy, here we go. Ready? Right. Here we go. Who goes? I'll I'll start. I was Kevin and I parted ways. The whole band parted ways. What year was that, Miller? Oh four for me. Oh three. Oh four. Early oh four. Something like that. And it was not pretty. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't. Um, that's how it was. It wasn't pretty. And then we didn't talk for a long, a long many years. And then one day I was in my garage. I remember it 
totally to this day in my garage. My phone rings. It was an unlisted call. And I'm like, ah. But for some weird reason, I took the call. All right. I never take an unlisted call. You obviously nobody does, right? You just ignore it and move on. 100%. I took this one for some reason. And when I picked up the phone, it was Kevin. And he said, Hey, dude, it's Miller. And I'm like, Duh. <laughs> of all the calls not to evade, that's the one I take. Come on, seriously. And then Miller says, Whoa, 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 whoa. Before you hang up, before you hang up, I just want to say, I'm sorry. And I went, wow, I was not ready for that. And Miller says, dude, you know, I, what happened? I, I apologize. He said, I know you were good to us. You gave us publishing on songs that, you know, we didn't write. You gave all the guys publishing. You shared your publishing. You were good to us. And I just want to say I'm sorry for how it went down. And uh, I, it, it, it was really, it, it was really good for me. I appreciated that. And I said to Kevin, I'm sorry for stuff I've done. We both kind of had a mutual, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like, you know, for a moment there, had a little moment. Because, yeah, everybody's got their faults and everybody does their thing. So we did some man stuff, you know, like bringing it up and, and apologizing for the way. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. So and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm glad you did, man. So, and then you guys, yeah. um, that was a long, that was way back. And then, so yeah. years went by then we didn't talk even after that. Like mm -hmm. we didn't talk at all because it was rough because there was some raw tension still going around. Right. And then about Kevin then calls maybe three, I don't know, four years later. I don't even know. We didn't really talk maybe. And then he said, I'm going to be in Vegas. Let's go have lunch. I didn't want to do that either, <laughs> but I went. Mm -hmm. Kevin has a way of persuading you to do stuff you probably don't want to do half the time, which is half his thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. And I, we went out and that's when I think we really kind of, it, we met each other and we started talking about how much fuel meant to us, how important fuel was in our life, how, you know, it was a, it was a once in a lifetime moment for both of us. And we started connecting, reconnecting and getting back together with that. Miller, jump in any time and correct me anything. Well, I'm, I'm just going to say that, and there's a backstory, like, on the bus, Carl and I, from early on, would spend hours upon hours together in the back of a fuck, of an RV. You can swear, it's fine. Okay. Of an RV, uh, you know, playing a Sony PlayStation 2, the game was called Boshito Blade, and we would go at this for hours, dude. I'm talking hours and hours and unsung hours of, and every time one of us figured out a move where you're beating the other dude's ass, you had to recon, you know, reconfigure your way you were doing stuff. Mm -hmm. But it, what I'm getting the thing is, it was like we were really bonded, man. Like I was his wingman, he was my wingman. When we went out, we all went out together. It was usually me and Carl hanging, shooting the shit, talking, uh, brainstorming on the bus. What's our next move? What do we want to do with lights? What do we want to do with stage plus? So yep. I was always in that mix with Carl while the other guys, you know, they worked hard. But Carl mm -hmm. and I were like more the mental nuts and bolts guys. Carl way more than me because obviously being the songwriter and giving up painstaking hours of his life, he'll never get back uh, <laughs> to write these great songs that I'm happy to play. But, uh, yeah, so we had this great connection for years and years and years and years. And, mm -hmm. and things just kind of just got dumb and out of hand and, you know, and shit happened. So, hence, there we were in Vegas uh, talking about, you know, all the, what, what great strides we made in our life as musicians, like hitting the lottery going, wow. You know, I know all my buddies that are at home playing that never even got mm -hmm. close to any level of right, this. Right. You know, and, and I can't believe I had that lottery ticket and fucked it up. Oh, oh over a woman too. Like it was the dumbest shit ever in my right. life. Um, <laughs> that being said, you're getting uh, all the juicy material today, dude. Let me tell I you. Guess, I guess so. I wasn't expecting you, well, but okay. I, I mean, Hey, if people want to know what happened, I mean, shit happens in bands, you know, like, and, uh, you can name the bands, the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, name Motley Crue. You know, all the bands. It's hard. <laughs> it's not easy. Man. But it's in the mix. <laughs> yeah. It's hey. tough. It's tough. Um, so there we were in Vegas, you know, rehashing all the, the things that we went through and, and, and the strides we made and, and like doing things never, I never imagined I'd be opening for Aerosmith for a year at, a, you know, on end, like 
Right, right. Three months here, three months there, three months there over a couple of years, like just playing with these guys constantly. They're inviting us. We love, we love fuel. Come play with us. Come, you know, and hanging out. Yeah. Steven Tyler calling me, like, what's up, baby? And I'm like, yo, it's Steve, what's up? You no, know, the guy would come to the bus, take my dog. And yeah, my dog, we had a dog on the bus with us. His name was Jack. He was, and yeah. uh, Steven would take him. And I would see my, I would lose my dog for like 11 hours a day. I would not even <laughs> see my dog. Anyway, so let's get back on point. So there we were in Vegas doing that. And Carl? Yeah. No, we we reconnected and we realized how much fuel meant to us. So then again, though, probably three years, a year or two went by after that even. And yeah. then... I did call you again when your father passed away. You did. You did. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. No, we would talk a little bit. Yeah. And then, but then when the band came back to me, basically, what was it? 2020. In July, I called Kevin and I was like, oh, and Kevin's like, let's go do this. And I said, no, I'm not going to do this. But then Kevin again talks me into, you know, so, uh, but we went back. We Then we met. Kevin said, I have the band. That was the cool part about it. Kevin said, I have the band all ready to go. I'm going to make this super easy on you this round. And I have the band. All you got to do is show up and let's do it. And that's what we did. So we went and showed up. It was John, Tommy, and Mark. And the band, and when I heard the guys, I went, wait a minute, this is no, this is something very, very interesting. John Corsale, amazing vocalist, amazing guitar player. He's a drummer as well. I mean, I don't even know if anybody knows that. The guy can play drums like crazy too. Just a super talented guy, so nice. And this is the, you know, super fun bunch of guys. And this is, at this point, it's, it's really fun for us. And so we're excited to have the new album, Anomaly, with all of us and it's you know we're excited for a new chapter here see what we can get into well we're definitely glad to see you guys back for sure so tell me about the writing process of the, of the new album was it uh is this old stuff that you guys had written did you guys just get together and start writing or well this was uh again <laughs> well kevin and i we first started we were just gonna we just said we're just gonna play shows and that's all we were intending to do. All right. So we were, yeah, we're going to just play off the legacy stuff. You know, yeah. all the, I mean, we have enough singles and, and material. Oh, yeah. albums yeah. to Go out and take, just go do shows and grab the money. But, yeah. and, but my silly brain clicks <laughs> in. Well, I'm in fuel again. I, and I can't, my, I start writing and I just start going and I'm my, I fall completely back into the old way mm -hmm. and I start writing. And so I show up at Kevin's house with a couple of tunes and they're like, oh, wow, okay, wait a minute. And they're excited about them. And that adds to the, you know, fuel to the fire as well. And so then I came back out here and I began writing even more and putting the whole record together. And basically it was an accident almost. I accidentally wrote a record just because I went back into autopilot for writing. I hadn't wow. written a rock song in, I don't know, 10 years probably. It just had, mm -hmm. I was burnt out. I was done with it. I'd had such crazy experiences with bands. I'm like, okay, this is, I'm done with this. Enough, yeah. Uh, but it, so then I just started writing it all, producing it all out here. I began, you know, turning songs in and they were like, well, you're going to mix it too. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> okay, I'm going to mix the record as well. This is great, which is great. I appreciate that. Well, no choice. It was COVID. We had to get it done. Right. And we couldn't get together as a band. So it all just kind of fell onto me, which is, that's fine. And so we, here, here we have, here we have a record, you know, that we pretty much did completely in-house. What usually takes staffs of people in you know special rooms and all that stuff sure. i was because of covid i had to do it kind of all right here and so what you hear is that so it was all it was all it all came from different parts of the country it wasn't like no it all came from carl's head yeah <laughs> well i mean everybody did their parts separately is that no I carl couldn't, played we couldn't get together so i did most of, i played most everything on the record oh no kidding yeah because yeah, uh oh, you know there were a couple wow. songs yep yeah. and Carl's aware of my drum style very well, obviously. And then, mm -hmm. you know, there was a couple things he would like send me a track and I'd go, I'd like out, out in my studio playing along with it going, um, <laughs> nope, can't do that. What? That hi-hat won't work like that because it doesn't work that way as a drummer's brain. I can't do my foot doing that with that, that, that. So you got to flip flop that. And then he right. would change it, send it back and go, is that what you, I'd, like, that's what I would, yeah, there it is. Yeah. So, and I just had to play, again, we couldn't get together. So I played all the instruments, all the keys, had to figure it all out. And I usually did all my demos before anyway, like all the way back to Hemorrhage and Shimmer. Those were my, I did those demos, a lot of that demo yeah, when stuff. Carl hands you a demo, it's basically a fucking, <laughs> the song is done. Like, you know. So so you recorded it, produced it. How long did that take you to do? 
Uh, uh, <laughs> a couple minutes, you know. Dude, I killed myself. Yeah, his life. <laughs> yeah, 16, 16 hours a day, you know, going in there. And, you know, it's, I don't know. A lot of people say, Carl, do you like writing? And I'm like, I like having written. <laughs> The process of writing is sometimes you want to cure yourself. And the same thing kind of goes with putting together a record. There's, it's a labor of love, but it is actually a labor. And there's days when, if, you know, on days when songs just come out and everything falls into place, it's a good day. But man, but even when that happens, it's hours and hours and hours. Like Carl said to me, man, I'll write a complete song, write, you know, lay everything down, track everything and be like, well, that one sucks. And that was like, you know, weeks out of my life. I'll never get back for right. one song. Right. And then you start to do the next one. And, and he's like, and if you feel it's got some radio potential or possibly that hit factor, he's like, then it's even more laboring. Cause now you're really busting a nut over it, you know, yeah. trying to fine tune all the parts. So it becomes what was already a, a bold body of work and time now is extended you know, he's he's told me, he's like, man, I'm working on this song. I'll send me a piece. I'm like, dude, it's really good. He's like, wait, I'm working on this part. I'm going to fix the bridge. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's great. But then he'll send it back like two weeks later. I'm like, oh, shit. I see where you're going now. You yeah. know, shit I would have never thought of, but his, his. I've just been doing it a while, right? So, and then we would, I even, I even did the vocals because i got to do my vocals to give you the melody. And sure. I would send it to John then. And we did then finally go into a, I drove to Pennsylvania from the West Coast because you couldn't fly. So I drove, I got in a car and drove. I was only supposed to drive the car in three states because you're not supposed to leave the little perimeter. I'm all the way. <laughs> he's like, they won't catch me. And as he's going through the Pennsylvania toll booth, it snaps a picture because there's no, and he's like, well, I'm busted. <laughs> I thought that was just a suggestion. Uh, well, you know, you used to have that you pull up to the toll booth and you pull the tab. Well, COVID now comes, you don't pull the little tab out of the toll booth. They take a picture and, and charge it to your bill. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, I, oh, man. Okay. Yeah. So now they're tracking you through your license plate. Now they find out that I'm, but anyway, that was a different thing. But I couldn't drive. So anyway, I would drove into Pennsylvania there and we got into a studio with John to f replace the vocals. And so mm -hmm. John comes in. And John's never been in a studio, really. We didn't know, Kevin and I, neither one of us knew how John was going to be in the studio. And John does his homework. He knows every little piece about everything, except we can't get in the studio until, he can only get in the studio at 8 in the morning. And I'm like, oh, dude, are you going to be able to sing at 8 in the morning? He's like, I'll make it happen. Dude goes in, starts warming up at five. By eight o'clock, he is recording and tracking, and he did every song on this record in the morning. So you got unheard of. Him. Unheard of. When you get a guy like that, you go, wow. I, can, I can, I can invest in this. This is that's great. impressive, man. Very impressive, dude. What I don't even know rock and roll singers who warm up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, anymore. <laughs> they just go for it. <laughs> so the new single is called hard uh -huh. and it, it comes hard it's um it's i was i was telling kevin earlier i think i might have even told you carl my first impression was that it had that classic fuel sound but it was it was different it was sounded fuller it sounded like there was more like more guitar or more like more edgier definitely heavier than i remember i know i told you guys that already um and I totally, totally digging the new tunes. Like I told you guys, I, I put it on and uh, and just let it go. Listen to the whole thing. I mean, there's a lot of standout stuff on this album. It's it's a hell of an album. Um, where is this going to be available? It's out. Every platform you want. Oh yeah, Spotify, Pandora, everywhere. You can even go to our YouTube Fuel Official on YouTube. You can hear it there if you want to go with there. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. so it's been out, and we're, you know, it's out there doing its thing now as we speak, brother. So now can people buy a hard copy of it too? Because I'm I'm that guy that yes. you know likes to likes to have it's the tactile thing, I guess, but likes to have the CD in hand or the vinyl in hand or you know, something in hand. Yeah, if you go if you go to our page, there's a link to our store where you on can get Facebook, go to Fuel Official on Facebook. Yep. Okay. Fuel Official on Facebook. And there's a you can find there there's a store there. You can buy vinyl, although the vinyl is being delayed right now. We, we were supposed to be available in December. But now, of course, we're in January and we're still waiting for that. But the vinyl demand is very high. And so the, I think the factory is way behind. But there's vinyl, there's CDs. We also have signed CDs you can get there. Just go to Fuel Facebook, uh, Fuel Official Facebook. And, and it's, on, it's on the web too, right? On uh, 
fuelofficial.com? Yeah, there's there too, but you probably okay. your best bet is to find it on uh Fuel Official on Facebook. Fuel yeah. Official on Facebook, got yeah. you. Okay. And there's all the merch there, t-shirts, you know, beanies, yeah. mm -hmm. all that stuff. So you guys are you guys are heading down the road now? Is that you guys are just gonna start touring again or we're well we're gonna, we're gonna limp it out, as they say. Like at this point, we're trying to, you know, which whatever shows we can that they that are on the books that they're gonna still let us entertain. Right. Uh, we we will be there, but hopefully they don't uh, I don't I just had a meeting with my doctor over a lot of stuff, uh, and this being one of the subjects with the COVID and vaccines and all that. And mm -hmm. he's saying and this was as of last week, he was saying he, what he's hearing in the medical community. And I am not a medical person. So this is this is just what I'm saying. Those that are listening on. Well, Kevin said um, Sorry, he, was, right. he was thinking just a few months from now, it, this should really yeah. should be peaked and, and gone because the new virus is obviously lesser. Let's hope it. anyways, because this is this is ridiculous. Well, you're seeing tours canceled all over the place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, you, know, you, you, you follow yeah. any bands you and see for people that don't understand that is because when there's a when there's a certain routing that is on that tour if there are a number of states and or cities that either are requiring everyone to have the card or masks or this or that a lot of the tours are saying well we can't skip this city this city, this city because it won't make sense right to be on a tour bus and pay for all this overhead and then have off you know have the bus for a couple of weeks be off for a week or two and then back and yeah, it's just the expenses get crazy because once you're out, you want to stay out. Yeah, so that's what we are choosing to kind of do weekend warrior stuff right now. Mm -hmm. And just like, you know, whenever the gigs come in, fly in here, fly back uh, as long as that. And even there, you're even there, you wonder if, you know, you get to the actual gig, somebody might go up. You can't, you know what I mean? We decided we're not going to take any risk tonight with having people. So it's and especially if you're trying to put together a full tour and all the logistics of buses and all that kind of stuff, which is we're not doing. But if you're a, you know, that's, you got a lot of expense and then you get out there and find out you can't make it happen. So it's tough for every band to tour right now in some, you know, in the limited capacity. So we're just doing what we can. We got a couple shows, like you said, at Empire Live on the 29th. We're playing the, the night before that, you know, Del Lago Resort and Casino as well. Yeah, in Waterloo. Mm -hmm. Waterloo. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're lucky. We, we're lucky we get to see you guys for sure. Yeah. Um, Dude, so we, get to play on that, I, we get to play with Kiss. There you go. Yeah, we hope. If that all works. On May 19th, right, we're at Daytona. So how does it feel to be getting back on the road? Are you guys kind of itching to do it again? or? Oh, yeah, it feels good. Yeah. I mean, listen, I don't think Carl and I are thriving to get on a tour bus right now and be away from home for months on end because that's just not – uh, me being a dad, I got a two-year-old, four-year-old. I want to be a dad, you know. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't want to be the guy that vaporizes for nine weeks at a time and then, hey, there's that dude that mommy sleeps with, you know. <laughs> Every nine months or so. Yeah. Oh, the other dude mommy sleeps with. What? Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> By the way, I just want to say, too, that I'm not a doctor either, but I, I do enjoy playing it, so. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. So now, what can we expect here at Albany to, uh, for the fuel shows? It's, I, I mean, it's, it seems like it's going to be high energy, heavy. Um, sounds like it's going to be a good time. What do you guys, uh, you guys got anything special for us in store? Well, again, or? if you go on the fuelofficial.com on Facebook, we have a lot of video up of the live that is undoctored, that is mm -hmm. just straight camera feed video, mixing board, you know, boom, right in. And uh, mm -hmm. you get a nice glimpse of what John, because John, really 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 pays attention to and pays great homage to the past fuel yes he he the kid crosses his dots eyes like all the inflection he was a fan there there's times if you close your eyes you're like wait a minute <laughs> oh my god wow it's pretty, pretty cool. scary yeah he was he was a real he was a fan as well and he said i know if i was in the audience i would want to hear it done and pay homage to what was done and that's important to him. We didn't, that was, that didn't come as a, like a, you know, modus operandi from Kevin and I going this, you got to, he right. want it to, he, he understands. And so uh, you're going to hear stuff off every album too. So we can play any song of any album because he can, he's, he's got it. He's got, he's got that amazing vocal range. The dude yeah. is a machine and uh, yeah, we're going to be playing music off every album that we've got out there. Uh, and, you know, it'll just be uh it's like you said, we bring the high energy. We've cut our teeth on being a live band anyway. That's what we always mm -hmm. started off as 
as well. Me, before we had a record deal, even we were a live band and that's all we knew. So, uh, yeah, come on out. It's, we'll give you, you know, you'll hear all the hits. We're not going to be one of those bands who don't play the hits. I don't, <laughs> but why they do that? I don't I'm know. I'm going to see bands when they don't play their, you know, they, you don't even play their hits and you're like, what? We're, you'll hear all the stuff you like. And it's a great mix. So yeah, absolutely. Man. Come on out. That was actually, I got, I got some fans from, uh, or some questions from fans, I should say. And that was one of the questions was, um, which one is it? Will you be doing the classic songs live? That was uh, Ron asked that question. Absolutely. So there's Ron, Ron. Every one of them, buddy. Absolutely. Shimmer, Hemorrhage, Bad Day, Jesus or a Gun, Bittersweet, on and on, like all the stuff off the first, every, every record. We have something off of every record. Right. Now, Amanda asks, <laughs> Carl, will you marry me? <laughs> no, that's not me proposing, Carl, but Amanda <laughs> wants to know if you'll marry her. <clears throat> well, that, uh, let me interject. I'll be his lawyer. Um, what's your worth, Amanda? <laughs> what, what's that Toby she's oh, nobody along no more. We're done with that shit. What's you the Toby Keith way, song? girl? You better be like a doctor or some shit. I There's think a Toby Keith song, man. I think he's very married for money, right? <laughs> I mean, I think he's gracefully declining. I think that's what that means. Well, you know, thank Amanda, you it, it probably helps that you don't know me. That's probably it. Yeah, you would not want to marry exactly. Carl. I mean, um, so now are you guys working on any new stuff for another release? Is that in the works or this? Oh, I'm sorry. That was from Michael N. Asked that question. Is he already tired of our, our last record that we just did six months no, ago? No, I think he's more curious of if you guys are gonna if you guys are gonna continue or if you guys uh, are I will answer this for Carl. I uh, I know Carl now for a long, long time. Yes, there will be no he's always writing. So <laughs> it's gonna come out. Is right. he never stops writing, especially <laughs> now that he's back in the game. Making stuff. Yeah, it's just kind of like it's therapy for Carl, trust me. You know. No, it's we are we work on stuff. In fact, we got some uh other stuff that we that may be as well, just in addition to this record that we have now, Anomaly, there may be some new stuff coming out as well in the near future, just because we had some stuff that we didn't want to put on this record for various reasons. And so we may have some stuff like that to come out. And yeah, we'll be writing. I, I, I can't, like I said, I just kind of go into automatic mode and start writing. And, uh, and I feel great about it because I think this is a, a great band and it's, uh, yeah, I'm excited for people to hear what this band could do live as well as a new record as well. And it's it's uh, if you haven't seen this band, it's we're, it's a great. I think it's no offense to all the other bands I've been in, but as a collective, as all members, I think it's probably the best band I've ever been in. I mean, these are these are serious players. Yeah, it's good when it starts clicking and working like that. That's that's perfect. Um, unfortunately, guys, that's our time. Do you guys have anything you want to say to the folks before we uh, wrap this up? Huh. That, just check us out on Fuel Official on Facebook. Uh, we've got Fuel Official on YouTube, all our sites. Check it out there and follow if you would and follow and share and do all that stuff. Because as I have found out, uh, we're it is the music industry, but it, nowadays social media is extremely important. And so uh, any following and all that good love you can give yeah. us. Be cool. And if you do come out to a live show, I can pretty much guarantee that you will meet all of us because we've been coming out after every show. Uh, restrictions permitting, mm -hmm. but uh, we've been going out where the merchandise is and shaking hands and kissing babies and taking photos and letting everybody meet the new lineup. And oh, which we you know, always kind of did anyway, right, Miller? We always, yeah, we, Carl and I always did that. Like, we were very big advocates of that from day one. We were always like, as soon as the show was done, take a shower, go on the bus, you know, whip up a, a martini mm -hmm. or something, then head out and stand in front of the bus and take pictures all night and meet people because that's, that's awesome. Well, I would appreciate that they're there, you know. Yeah, and, absolutely. And no, that way. So if you want to come hang with us, man, we'll, you know, dump back a bottle of wine, I mean, a glass of wine and <laughs> <laughs> hang out. So the new album is Anomaly, Carl, Kevin, the band is Fuel. They're coming live to Albany, January 29th, Empire Live. Doors open at 7. Um, I can't wait to see you guys shake your hand in person. Right and um, I can't wait to see the show. I'm really excited about that. Guys, I appreciate your time very much. And um, we look forward to seeing you guys live here at Albany. Thanks, man, buddy. buddy. You fuzz and right. rock, man. I appreciate that, man. Thank you, guys. That was fuel. Definitely appreciate it, boys. Take care. Later, buddy. All right. Thank you.
Thank you.